This is Nightline. I'm Brandon Wong. News making the headlines. CEO Mufti among six people to be appointed senators for new cabinet post. And Perikata National will form new Para government. The lineup is functional, and he promised that his team will deliver the best to meet the aspirations of the people. Cabinet saya ini adalah sebuah cabinet yang berfungsi ataupun functional cabinet. Setelah mendapat menyampaikan pematan yang lebih berfokus. He also stressed that all ministers and deputy ministers have been screened by the police and the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC. The new cabinet will also take their oath of office before the Yang Dipertuan Agung at Istana Melawati at 3 p.m. on Tuesday. The Prime Minister also explained the absence of a Deputy Prime Minister that was replaced by four senior ministers that will oversee the international trade and industry, defence, works and education portfolios. Menteri Menteri Kanan akan membantu saya untuk menjalankan tugas sebagai Perdana Menteri termasuklah memperusikan mesyuarat Kabinet di waktu ketiadaan saya di dalam negara. Dengan adanya Menteri-Menteri Kanan ini, maka tiada keperluan pada masa ini untuk seorang timbalan Perdana Menteri dilantik. He also announced the restructuring of the Education Ministry when he unveiled the revival of the Higher Education Ministry. Tantri Muhyiddin said under the present structure, the Education Ministry is burdened with huge and challenging work since its portfolio is from preschool to higher education. Therefore, he stressed that the Higher Education Ministry needs to be reintroduced while at the same time maintaining and empowering the Education Ministry. In wrapping up the announcement, Tantri Muhyiddin also congratulated all those selected as cabinet members and deputy ministers. Saya berdoa semoga Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala memberikan taufik dan hidayahnya kepada semua anggota kabinet di bawah pimpinan saya untuk 
menjalankan tugasnya dengan penuh beramanah dan berintegriti. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Earlier, Tan Sri Muhyiddin was granted an audience with the Yang Dipertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Bila Shah to present the list of the new cabinet lineup. The official car carrying the Prime Minister was seen entering the main gate of Istana Negara at 10.47 a.m. before leaving for his office two hours later. Tan Sri Muhyiddin, 72, was sworn in as the eighth Prime Minister before Al Sultan Abdullah at Istana Negara on March the 1st. In Pera, Amno, Paz and Bersatu have agreed to join forces to form a new Pera coalition state government. The state's Barikata National PN coalition now has the support of 32 elected representatives after two assemblymen, one from PKR and another independent, declared support for the coalition. Perak Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Ahmad Faisal Azumu said the two assemblymen are PKR's Datuk Abdul Yunus Jamhari representing Kuala Kurau and independent Datuk Noli Ashilin Muhammad Radzi representing Tualan Seka. The duo have decided to join Bersatu. Hari ini saya masih Menteri Besar Perak dan ketiga-tiga parti uh, saya telah pun uh, uh, berurusan dengan uh, Parti AMNO dan Parti PAS dan ketiga-tiga kepimpinan parti telah pun bersepakat untuk uh, menyembahkan senarai nama-nama yang dicadangkan oleh parti masing-masing kepada duli yang maha mulia pada Keseri Sultan Perak untuk diperkenankan dan apabila telah mendapat perkenan calon tersebut hendaklah mengangkat sumpah sebagai menteri besar dan menubuhkan barisan exco yang baru. Dr. Sri Ahmad Faisal made the announcement at a special press conference attended by Pera Amno Liaison Chief Datu Sarani Muhammad and Pera Pass Commissioner Razban Zakaria. The PN coalition in Pera now have a total of 32 seats in the State Legislative Assembly comprising Amno with 25, Bersatu 4 and Pass 3. Meanwhile, the Perak Perikata National was further bolstered with the support of another three opposition assemblymen. They are DAP's Trono Assemblyman Paul Yong Chu Kyong, DAP's Buntong Assemblyman A. Siva Subramaniam, and Amana's Titi Serong Assemblyman Hasnul Zulkanain Abdul Munaim. All three have quit their respective parties and become independents. Datuk Sulaiman Mat Ali was sworn in as Malacca's 12th Chief Minister on Monday. The swearing-in ceremony was held at Dewan Sri Utama in the office of the Yang Dipertua Negeri in Ayakaroh, Malacca, before Yang Dipertua Negeri Tun Dr. Muhammad Khalil Yaakob. Datuk Sulaiman, who is the Lendu State Assemblyman and Malacca Amno State Liaison Committee Secretary, is part of the newly formed Perikatan National Government. He succeeds one-term Chief Minister Adli Zahari of Parti Amanah Negara who lost the position after the recent fall of the Pakatan Harapan government. 55-year-old Datuk Sulaiman has been the Masjid Tana Amno Division Secretary since October 2013 and was once the State Amno Secretary. He holds a professional master's degree in management from the United Kingdom and has vast experience in oil and gas industry of about two decades. Eighteen new COVID-19 cases were reported on Monday, bringing the total in the nation to 117. Among the new cases is a man who had just returned from Iran. Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia ingin memaklumkan satu kes, iaitu kes 101 yang dikesan di kalangan pasien under investigation telah dilaporkan melibatkan seorang lelaki yang baru pulang dari Iran. Kes, kes bersama dengan rakan perniagaan beliau telah ke Iran pada 20 hari bulan Februari sehingga 27 Februari 2020. Kes telah dikesan bergejala pada 5 Mac 2020 dan kes telah disahkan positif COVID-19 pada 8 Mac 2020. The patient has since been admitted to the isolation ward at Tuan Kujava Hospital in Negeri Sembilan. 
There are still two cases in the intensive care unit requiring respiratory aid since Sunday. That to Dr. Nor Hisham also said there has not been any sporadic case of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the health ministry is all geared up for any eventual surge in the number of COVID-19 patients in the near future. Dr. Suresh Kumar Chidambaran, infectious disease consultant at Sungai Buloh Hospital, said the necessary preparations and facilities had been placed in readiness for any eventuality. Dr. Suresh said while the Sungai Bulu Hospital will be the main dedicated health centre to treat the coronavirus infection, the Shah Alam Hospital and the Churas Rehabilitation Hospital have also been designated for the purpose if the need arises. He said there were sufficient beds for COVID-19 patients at the Sungai Bulu Hospital. At the moment, he added, the fourth and fifth floors of the hospital had been designated for COVID-19 patients with 112 beds respectively, while its intensive care unit located on the third floor with a capacity of 14 beds had been dedicated to serious victims requiring oxygen and intensive care in the fight against the outbreak. Dr. Suresh said that apart from expanding facilities, the ministry would also repurpose manpower from other public sector units as well as bring them in from other states in the fight against the infection. The price of crude oil plunged 22% on Monday in the biggest percentage drop since 1991 after the collapse of an oil supply agreement between the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, and Russia. As of 5 p.m., WTI crude stood at 52.09 U.S. dollars per barrel, while Brent stood at 35.99 U.S. dollars per barrel. Meanwhile, Asian stock markets, including the FBM KLCI, also plunged on Monday, mostly due to the free fall of oil price and COVID-19 fear. The FBM KLCI went down by 58.94 points to 1,424.16. Losers outnumbered gainers in the broader market by 1,139 to 120, with 127 counters unchanged. Meanwhile, the government must have the flexibility to prescribe additional fiscal support should there be any further deterioration in the global economy. Under the current circumstances, proactive expansionary fiscal policies are advisable and lauded as the private sector, businesses and households are expected to hold back expenditure. Pada tahun 2009 yang mana negara mengalami kemelestan ekonomi, KDNK menguncup sebanyak 1.5%. Ada dua pakej rasa ekonomi yang diperkenalkan dalam tempoh yang sangat-sangat dekat. Itulah uh, keputusan yang dibuat disebabkan suasana ekonomi pada ketika itu. So, saya fikir, uh, apa itu, uh, modus operandi yang sama juga di, di, akan juga dipakai untuk keadaan semasa ini. Dr. Afzal Nizam also said that the government may have to adjust budget 2020 if oil prices continue to fall below the US $30 per barrel level as happened in early 2016. He added while the central bank also has the leeway to reduce interest rates, it would all depend on the evolving economic outlook amid the spread of COVID-19 globally. Lorry driver burnt to death in fiery crash. This and more from the local front when we return. Welcome back. Datsri Azambaki has been appointed as the new Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MACC Chief Commissioner, effective Monday. The former MACC Deputy Chief Commissioner of Operations takes over from Latifa Koya, who resigned as the agency's head on March the 6th. According to the statement from the Prime Minister's office, the appointment was made by the young Diputuan Agung Al-Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al-Mustafa Bilal Shah in accordance with the MACC Act 2009. The King also granted Latifa's resignation effective Monday.
Newly appointed Attorney General Tantri Idris Harun has given the green light to Datu Sri Gopal Sri Ram to continue leading the prosecution team in high-profile cases, including those involving former Prime Minister Datu Sri Mohammad Najib Tun Razak. Tansri Idrus, when contacted, said the directive also applies to lawyer Datu V. C. Thabaran, who is also an ad hoc prosecutor, as well as to the prosecution team handling the SRC international case involving Datu Sri Najib. Earlier, Datu Sri Gopal, a former federal court judge who is serving as a senior deputy public prosecutor, said Tansri Idrus had called him to go ahead with the prosecution against other high profile figures. He told reporters after Datu Sri Rosma Mansu's graft trial at the High Court on Monday. Tantri Idrus, a former federal court judge, was appointed as the new Attorney General last Friday after Tantri Tommy Thomas resigned on February the 28th. In Triganu, a man was burnt to death while two others sustained serious injuries in an accident involving two lorries near Kamaman early on Monday. In the 5.15 a.m. incident, both lorries burst into flames following the impact of the collision. According to authorities, the accident occurred when a lorry belonging to a courier service company, which was heading towards Jarangao from Jabo, veered into the path of an oncoming lorry laden with sawn timber. Magat Razak Majuso, 53, the driver of the sworn timber lorry, was burnt to death after he was trapped in his seat while his son, Magat Hanif Iqbal, 22, who was the lorry attendant, was rescued by passers-by from the burning lorry. The driver of the other lorry, Sham Rula Abdul Salam, 38, was thrown out of his vehicle and was admitted to Kamaman Hospital with serious injuries. Magat Razak's charred remains were handed over to police for further action. In Kuda, the man who allegedly killed his older brother and stuffed his body in a barrel before filling it with cement in Kapalabatas has been remanded for seven days. The remand order against the 25-year-old man was issued by Assistant Registrar of the Alostar Magistrates Court, Rashida Azmi, under Section 117 of the Criminal Procedure Code. The case is being investigated under Section 302 of the Penal Code for murder, which carries the mandatory death penalty upon conviction. Meanwhile, a source said the victim, who was the stepbrother of the suspect, was killed because he took the suspect's shirt, which was a gift from the latter's girlfriend. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Basutranganu, two men were killed when a car they were travelling in collided with a tanker. Jirte Fire and Rescue Station Chief Muhammad Tamimi Chek Musa said the department was alerted of the crash, which occurred in Kampung Apal at about 6 a.m. He said firemen took about 30 minutes to extricate the victims from the wrecked car before handing over their bodies to police. The victims have been identified as Muhammad Alif Ashraf Adnan, 24, and To Tikyai, 50, while the 26-year-old tanker driver escaped unhurt. Afghanistan's presidential inauguration ceremony on Monday was disrupted by the sound of suspected rockets falling near the palace. Ashraf Ghani, who was sworn in for a second term, continued on with his speech as security rushed to surround him and invitees ran away from the sound. The televised event saw Ghani taking an oath at the presidential palace in Kabul at a ceremony attended by a number of foreign diplomats before the pandemonium erupted. His main rival for the top job, Abdullah Abdullah, refused to recognize the inauguration, holding his own swearing-in ceremony as a rival president, suggesting talks between the two camps and Khalil Zad aimed at brokering an agreement had not been successful. In another development, the U.S. aviation regulators plan to require Boeing to re rewire all 737 MAX aircraft before allowing the troubled planes to fly again. The preliminary decision, which hasn't been reported before, covers all of the nearly 800 MAX airliners produced so far.
The decision, however, could be affected by further internal discussions and additional data the plane maker may submit to the regulator. But in the past few weeks, Federal Aviation Administration managers and engineers have concluded that the potentially hazardous layout violates wiring safety standards intended to prevent dangerous short circuits. Under extreme circumstances, wiring failures could cause flight control systems to sharply point down an aircraft's nose in a similar way to the automated maneuvers that brought down two MAX jets and claimed 346 lives. The MAX has been grounded worldwide since an Ethiopian Airlines flight crashed shortly after takeoff last March, less than six months after the same model was involved in a similar fatal accident in Indonesia. Both accidents saw uncontrolled drops in the aircraft's nose in the moments before the plane crashed, which investigators have blamed on the model's anti-stall flight system. Before we wrap up Nightline this time around, let's take a look at what has been installed on the front pages of Malaysia's main newspapers on Tuesday, March the 10th. The New Straits Times, Harian Metro, Berita Harian and the Malaysian Reserve all highlight Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin's announcement of his new cabinet, which saw the appointment of four senior ministers instead of a deputy prime minister to ensure a more focused and functional cabinet. Also on the front page, are reports on MH17 trial, which began with calls for justice, and a report on Budget 2020 that needs to be revised amid falling oil prices. Do get your copies. As we wrap up Nightline, let's take a look as freestyle skiers and snowboarders enjoy fresh snow and sunny skies as they fly down the steeps of the Austrian Alps at the penultimate event of the season's Free Ride World Tour. With that, I'm Brandon Wong. Thank you for watching and stay safe.